All right, so in this video, we'll take a look at the process of drawing isolines and creating field maps. Once again, a field map takes data like this. These are field readings of a height above sea level and connects them with lines. Those lines we call isolines. And there's a certain set of rules that we have to follow when drawing an iso when drawing isolines and that's really what this video is going to be about. The process associated with drawing them and the rules that we need to follow. Now drawing isolines is easy. There are five steps that we'll follow. The first one is to connect dots which are points of equal value. For example, connect all the 30s with one line, connect all the 40s with one line, and so on and so forth. Always use a smooth curved line to connect these values. So from point to point, always use a smooth line. Make sure that your line never crosses another. Isolines can't carry the same value when they cross over, so they should never touch. Isolines may close, forming rounded shapes, or may simply run off the edge of the map, depending on the field. Which means that you do not have to curl your uh, isolines around so that they um, fit nicely on the page. They can run off the page, so because this is data that is taken from the field. That probably sounds very confusing, but as we do more and more of these examples, you'll see what I mean. And then the contour interval is the change in value from one line to the next. So always read the question or figure out what is being asked of you to do and understand that the contour interval is going to be what each line value is worth. So let's start right away. You should have a copy of these in Notability. Um, that I left in Google Classroom or however I, I sent them to you, it's good to practice as I do them. Even if you just follow along with me and, and do what I'm doing, it's still better than just watching. So here's our first um, field map. It says drawing isotherms, draw the 28 degree, 29 degree, and 30 degree isotherm. Now from my point of view the easiest way to start this is to always use a pencil because you can erase but of course we're doing it on the iPad right now but in real life use a pencil identify the numbers you want to connect so I want to connect 28 so here's a 28 here's a 28 and here's a 28 and here's a 28 and here's a 28 over here and there's another one down here and another one down here so if I need to connect them I need to connect them by using a smooth line that runs around all of these values and connects them all together. So that would be my first ISO line. I call it an isotherm because we're dealing with temperature readings. Now the same thing with 29. I want to identify where I'm going. So I, I kind of can plan a little bit better. So there are five points. I can start anywhere, go in any direction. Most important thing is to not touch the lines I already drew and make sure that I'm connecting all of the points that are equal to 29. And then my last one is 30. And here's 30, 30, 30. Okay. So I want to connect these, connect these. And now I have an interesting choice. If I were to come underneath the 31 and draw a line there, that wouldn't be correct because I know that if this is 29 and this is 31, there has to be a 30 in the middle. So to do this correctly, I would need to go around like that. And as we do more examples, we'll talk about the planning that goes involved. That the we'll talk about the planning that's involved with making those types of decisions. So that's our first ISO therm or ISO line or field map that we drew. Let's practice another one. This one looks a little bit more tricky. It says draw all ISO bars. So it's not telling you exactly what values to use. So we're just going to go um, by ones. It looks like all this data is going by one. So we'll start with the lowest value which is 1003. So here's 1003. 
okay I don't see any oh there's one down here I almost lost it so those are the those are the values so I'm just going to connect them like that next I want to go to 104 oh, 1004 so here's all the thousands and fours Okay, I, I technically missed this one down here, but that's my fault. Um, all the thousand and fives. Now here's that rule. I can stop here at the end of the page and come back up around like this. Around like this. Now why would I need to come back up around? Because even though there isn't a thousand and five written, I can assume that in between one thousand and four, if I'm counting this way, one thousand and five would come, and then one thousand and six. So now I'm going to connect all the thousands and sixes. I'm going to come off the page, and then sneak back on the page like that. Oops, that was a really poor job. For an earth science teacher there we go and then that should finish there and then do a thousand and seven now there's only a few thousand and sevens so my lines look like that thousand and eight there's only one thousand and eight only one thousand and nine and I have to tuck that thousand and nine before that ten ten and now I could do ten ten and now I can do 1011. So once again, the rules in play here. I'm connecting points of equal value with a smooth curved line. I'm going off the page when I need to. Like over here, this line for 1006 technically goes off the page and then comes back around here. So I don't have to show it any other way. And I'm also planning appropriately that if I'm looking at values and something's missing, or if I need to draw in between, I'm trying to split the difference. So if every one of these points is equal to one millibar, because they're isobars, and I have 1,006 and 1,004, I can assume that halfway between them would be 1,005. Even though that value is not represented with a dot, it's a field, and I know that in order to get from 1,004 to 1,006, I'd have to go through a thousand and five. Okay, let's try another practice. Draw the 10, the 15, the 20, and the 25. So let's start with the 10. So I'm going to find all my 10s. Okay, which I only have two. And now here's a little secret that I find really helpful too. Just because I have two 10s doesn't mean there aren't any other 10s on the map. Like I was saying, there would probably be. A 10 here so I'm gonna write it in right in order to go from 9 to 11 I'd have to have a 10 and somewhere down here from 9 to 15 I'd have to assume that there's gonna be a 10 there and between 8 and 14 again there'd have to be a 10 there so even though I don't have other 10s I can assume that there are some 10s here as I come through and connect my points and here and here all right same thing with the next value so 15 where are the 15s well here's a 15 and here's a 15 that's easy but there's also a 15 probably here and there's a 15 probably here and there's a 15 up here because to go from 11 to 17 I'd have to count through 15 so now I can connect these points same thing with 20. Here's a 20. Here's a 20. 21. So there's probably a 20 there. A 20 and a 20. Now I connect those nice and easy. Smooth line. And then 25. There's only a couple of 25s on this map here, here, and here. So I'd, I could come down here, but that would be wrong because I'm splitting between 20 and 22. That would mean I had 21. So I'd have to be somewhere on this side and come down and around and through and um, one more this is a, a map of snow depth and what we want to do is draw 
ISO lines at 10 centimeter intervals. So in order to do that, we then this is a little bit more difficult because it doesn't go the data doesn't go by tens. So if we were going to start with a line equal to 10 centimeters, these are depths in centimeters, my first line would have to be here. Why? Because 13 is greater than 10. So I'd have to draw a line representing my first field value of 10, or my first ISO line of 10. All right, so moving on to 20. Here's 20, 20, and 20, keeping in mind that I have to avoid any values that don't sit on that line. Next would be 30, because we're going by tens. Now, there are no 30s, but I know that between 28 and 31, there would be 30. If I counted from 26 to 32, there'd be a value of 30. From 27 to 36, there would be a value of 30 somewhere over there. 28 to 35, value of 30. 26 and 32. So even though 30 is not represented on the map, I now have an idea of where 30 would be. And I can connect those with a smooth line. Um, next one is 40. So here's 40, 40. Same thing again. There's a 40 in all these hidden places. So now I can connect these values and wrap it up. And that's drawing ISO lines. If you follow the steps and you think through your lines before you draw them, you will never have a problem. Of course, with anything, practice makes perfect, and that's what we'll be doing in class. Thanks for watching.